If your tests are hard to read, they can be harmful. So in this video, I will share with you seven simple tips to make your tests easy to read and to maintain. Tip number one, apply structure wisely. Structure will help the reader to understand the different parts of a test. That's why we can use white space as a way to create different regions inside of a test. Commonly, we use the structure of the triple A, arrange, act, assert, and that formula is awesome for most tests. However, it's also important to make sure that we don't take it too far. What do I mean with that? Don't stick to it when it doesn't make sense. If that test can be a simple one line, there's no need to have the triple A structure. And forcing the test to be in the triple A structure is just one way to increase the cognitive load of those that are reading the test. Tip number two, use the setup and cleanup methods. When you only have one test inside of a test class, it's hard to make a point that you should move code into the setup method or into the tier down. But often when you need to create the second test, it's quite common to copy that test to other place. And now you will notice that you have at least a small degree of duplication on the arrange step. There are some things that are always being created to define the conditions for that test. Things that are common across all of those tests inside of that test class are related to the test scenario that you are building. On those cases, move those into the setup stage, unless you have a really good reason to have them inside of the test method, like as an example, if that helps the readability of the test when you are reading it, you can clearly see all the important variables for that test. But if it's not one of those cases, simply move it out there into the setup method and assign it to a field with a clear, well descriptive name. That is more than enough. Tip number three, hide irrelevant information. If you are creating an object in order to perform a test and you need to set a set of fields, but most of them don't bring value to that test case so they don't impact the outcome, having them laying around in the test method is just bringing complexity to the test. Now, me as a reader, well, I'll look into that and I will have the feeling that some of those variables might impact the result of the test. Or I might ask, why do I need to know all of that stuff in order to understand this test? On those cases, it's a good idea to create test data builders, or at least extract that setup, the creation of that object into a kind of like a factory method that can do always the same thing, but abstract you from those properties that don't bring any value. But be careful because when applying this tip, it's extremely important that you don't hide the cause from the effect. In other words, if you have one case where a single property in the middle of 10 properties can impact the outcome, the end result, I should read that property, that value that you are assigning on the test method. Let's say that I'm testing the validation of the email in the client object. On that test, I should be able to see the email. But for that case, the address doesn't matter. The tip number four is don't abstract the act part of your test. So according to the triple A structure, you have the arrange, the act, the assert. The act is when you call something that will then either change a state, interact with an object. There will be something that you can observe or you can check in order to assert that that test was successful. And that thing that you do to perform the behavior is extremely important to keep it as pure as possible. Don't abstract it away under a helper method or something like that. Because that is extremely informative for someone that is looking into your tests in order to understand how a given piece of code works. If I need to use the client email validation, I should look into your tests and clearly see how you perform the client validation. I will find a test for that and I don't want to see obstructions putting me away from what is being done. Another risk of doing that is that once you extract that to an helper method or something like that, you can possibly bring complexity into the test code to have logic inside of the test code 
instead of having it inside of the final code. And when I'm writing and reading the test, I don't see a clear definition on how to use it. Tip number five, use Humcrest style assertions. If you have used something like fluent assertions or shouldly, you know what I'm talking about. This particular style of assertions is quite easy to read. The way that you express those assertions is in a fluent way. So it simplifies the act of reading what the, the test is asserting. So if your testing framework doesn't support Amcrest style assertions out of the box, make sure you find a library to do that for you and start using that everywhere. You will see a huge difference in the readability of your tests. Tip number six, use constants for expected values. Extract them to a constant, give them a proper name, and it will improve extremely the readability of your tests. And finally, tip number seven, always respect conventions. Your project should have a set of conventions that you need to follow. The most common example is how to name a variable. But in testing, it's extremely important to have conventions as well, to name a test, to name a test class, because once you know how to read one test inside of that code base, it should be quite easy to apply the same idea, the same principles, the same style of reading to other tests in the same code base. But also it will reduce the friction of anyone trying to bring a new test in place. What we are trying to do is to create familiarity between the different tests so the ones reading it know every single time what we are talking about. And since we are talking about test names, you will want to watch this video right here because it will show you how you can pick the best test naming conventions for your project and for your team.